Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and Obsidian Flames is coming out very, very soon. And I wanted to take a look at some early deck lists. Now Obsidian Flames is going to be coming out soon and it kind of lined up with the release date of uh, the set in Japan and with our set over here in America. So we didn't really get to have like a couple months in advance like we do with Pokemon 151 where we get to see all these new decks early and can look at early lists from the new set. But we still have some early lists to take a look at here from Japan for both Charizard EX and Tyranitar EX. Arguably the two biggest EXs to come out of this set that are attacking decks, right? There is another EX which I'm sure we will see be played in some of these lists. Um, there isn't a whole lot of lists for the record. It's not like there's a lot of lists to look at here. There's only a few, but I did want to take a look at them nonetheless because we are eagerly awaiting the release of Obsidian Flames. And I thought it'd be a great idea to look at some early lists here from Japan and see what people are building for both Charizard and Tyranitar EX. The big one, of course, being Charizard, it is going to be, you know, the new you know, big EX from the set. If y'all are going to go on to enjoy the video, leave a like. I'll leave a link to the website down below if you want to go take a look at the list yourself. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the second channel here if you haven't subscribed already. And also go check out the podcast channel down below too. Um, so let's start things off with Tyranitar EX. Now, if you don't know what Tyranitar does, Tyranitar EX is a pretty interesting card. It's got the attack. Um, it's got two attacks, actually. So first thing to note, it is a 340 HP lightning type stage 2 that requires fighting energy and both of his attacks are honestly not too bad right so being a lightning pokemon it's going to be good in the new format we will have a brand new ex coming out that is weak to lightning that will be popular we have palkia v star and lugia v star which are still seeing some success right now in the format meaning that tyranitar has a good time into those matchups and it is requiring fighting energy so you can play it in a fighting style deck if you really wanted to so it does have two attacks. You got Mountain Fling for one energy, does 120 damage. And you discard the top two cards of your deck. Uh, not great, but 120 for one energy ain't bad. Obviously, you're one-shotting most things in the format um, that are, you know, low HP. And then you got Molnir Rampage. If your bench Pokemon have any damage counters on them, this attack does 100 more damage. So for two energy, you can do 250 damage. However, something on the bench has to have damage on it, which we're going to take a look at some of the lists. So... Again, there's not a whole lot of lists for Tyranitar, um, but we do have a couple to take a look at. So the first one here, this one is maybe the most straightforward of the lists. We are going to see Tyranitar being played with Lucario Roaring Resolve. So the idea behind this deck is you use the Roaring Resolve Lucario with its ability where you can put two damage counters on your Lucario and then you can search your deck for a fighting energy and attach it to the Lucario. So not only do you have a great way to put you know, damage on a Pokemon on the bench, but you can also put damage on your, you can put energy on Lucario, meaning that once your Tyranitar EX falls, you can go back on Lucario. Now, the interesting thing about this list, it is playing a Radiant Serena, which I'm not sold on. I get the idea. Like, it actually does give Tyranitar a little bit more bulk, and you really only have to do Lucario once. And I think you can actually do Lucario's ability and fail it and still put the damage on, which is pretty good. So... I'm not sure the Serena is worth it, but the idea behind the deck is, again, you have a one prize attacker with Lucario, and you can use its ability to put damage on it for Tyranitar's big attack. Now, the other cool thing of this combo is you, you see the energy switch right here. So what you can do with this deck is you can actually go Lucario, put energy on Lucario, and then you can use energy switch to move energy from Lucario to your Tyranitar EX. And building it up in a single turn, only two energy isn't that hard to build up, but having that extra way to put energy on it with that energy switch is really, really nice. So I do like that idea of playing energy switch in the Tyranitar deck. There's no other two prizer in the deck except for Tyranitar, so your opponent does have to go through a couple T-Tars and a Lucario or two, which Lucario can do a decent chunk of damage. I maybe would like to see more Super Rod in this list specifically to get energy back in the deck for you, Lucario. You could even get away with like a 2-2 Lucario line if you really wanted to, but I guess 3-3 is also good. We got another list here. Now, this one is also pretty cool, and this is another really good way to play Tyranitar. We see this build is using the Gengar from Lost Origins. This was the other way you could theoretically play your Tyranitar is with Lost Origin Gengar. Gengar's ability, if it's in your discard pile and you have a bench space open, you can put it onto your bench and put three damage counters on your Gengar. So Gengar can be put into play for free with its ability, but you also have to put damage on it. Now, the cool thing about that is, of course, it immediately puts itself into play. No shenanigans, no gimmicks. It just has to be in your discard pile. 
and then you immediately get an extra thing for your um, Tyranitar. This list also plays the new Pidgeot EX. Now, Pidgeot EX does have the ability where you can get any card out of your deck once a turn. So it's literally, its ability is four seal stone every single turn, which is pretty insane, um, which does help. I mean, that's one thing I like about Pidgeot, especially when you combine it with another big stage two like Tyranitar EX, is you kind of have some good synergy between the two because you can get a Pidgeot in play, you can use Pidgeot to help chain even more Tyranitar over the course of the match, which which I do like. The other thing I like about this list is it's a little bit more low maintenance than Lucario build. Lucario build does require you to get real lose in play. This build just, you need to get a Gengar in the discard, which I guess isn't like the easiest thing to do, um, but I do like this list um, quite a bit. I like the con the straightforward and the simplicity of it. There is a debate as to whether or not you want to play Rotom and Luminion. I'm not sure we need Rotom and Luminion. The Four Seal Stone is nice to have though. Um, the Raiding Alakazam is pretty cool too. Um, because, again, Tyranitar does so much damage, you can move some of the damage around to set up KOs down the road. Mm -mm. The deck does play the new um, Stadium card that makes basic Popon's attacks cost one colors more, which is pretty good. So you can use that to slow down Lost Box, which Lost Box, I'm sure, will struggle with Tyranitar because it's so bulky. But that'll just put the ice on the cake, especially with four Iono. This build here does play the two Lake Acuity over... The, uh, the new League Headquarters card. So Lake Acuity gives Tyranitar, you know, a bit more bulk because it takes 20 less damage if there's a fight energy on it. But I do like the Temple play. The Collapse is good, too, because you can collapse to weigh one of your two prizers to make it less easier to boss. Another really cool list here does play the new Dodrio. Now, this deck is not out yet because we don't have... Um, we don't have Dodrio yet. Dodrio is coming out in Pokemon 151, but when we do go Dodrio, this is another way you can play Tyranitar Axis with Dodrio. Dodrio's ability allows you to put a damage counter on it once you're in turn, and then you can draw a card. So you can draw a card and then put damage on Dodrio, which is a pretty good ability. So Dodrio Tyranitar will probably be the best way to play it when we get the new Pokemon 151 set, but it's a little too early for that. Um, but these are the two lists we can play right away. And actually, interestingly enough, the list here was actually created by uh, Daishi Shimada, who actually... Got second place at Worlds last year with that Arc Pikachu Decidueye Jolteon deck. So Daichi's also a very strong player, and uh, I'm sure they've made really good lists before. Obviously, they they got second at Worlds, so this is their list. So we got a great baseline for Tyranitar thanks to Daichi. Um, but those were the T-Tar lists. Again, nothing too crazy. There's only two lists available because, again, the set's not out yet in Japan. Um, so we haven't really—they haven't had time to, like, fully play all the new decks yet. Actually, it is out in Japan, but we just, it's not, like, we just don't have a lot of time to really kind of gauge. We don't have, like, a month in advance, right, is what I am what I meant to say. Um, but, yeah, that's Tyranitar. Really good card, in my, well, not really good, but it's, it's decent. The big one, though, is, of course, going to be the new Charizard EX, and how good will it be? Now, if you don't know what Charizard does, it does have the ability where, when you evolve it, you can search your deck for up to three Fire Energy and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. So, right off the bat, Charizard's ability is already pretty bonkers. Its ability alone would make it playable. Energy acceleration for fire Pokemon already is a thing because we do have both like Armor Rouge and Magnet Basin, which are both kind of ways to manipulate the energy in a fire deck. But now we have this ability, which puts energy into play for free. And its attack is also very powerful for two fire energy. It does 180 damage and then does 30 more damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. So over the course of the game, Charizard becomes even stronger. I mean, if your opponent already takes a two prize knockout, Charizard's already doing 240 damage, which is pretty good. And it's a dark Pokemon. Really good against Mew and Lugia. Or Mew and Gardevoir, I mean. So let's take a look at some early Charizard lists. I'm sure this is what you've all been waiting to see. So we got quite a few lists here. Um, again, not a whole lot of lists, but we do have some. More than the Tyranitar. So the first build here we do see does play Arceus, V-Star, and Pidgeot. So this is basically just Charizard with a ton of support cards around it. Um, in fact, it actually only plays two Charizard EXs and the 3-2 two, two two Arceus and a 1-1 one, one, one Pidgeot. So very limited attackers. Um... It's more of an Arceus deck than a Charizard deck, but Arceus Charizard can honestly be its own thing. I mean, Arceus, you can kind of use early game, and then if your opponent takes four prizes, Charizard is going to be doing even more damage. Even if they take three prizes or two prizes, right, Charizard just starts getting very strong. And you can actually use Charizard to put fire energy on your Arceus. You can use Charizard to put three fire energy on an Arceus V-Star, allowing you to do 230 damage instead of having to go double turbo. Right, so that is pretty cool. So now I'm going to play the double turbo to do 180 with Trinity Nova. You can put three fires on it, right, to then do 200 damage, which can be nice. So there's some synergy between the two there. Um, then we do play the Pidgeot for extra support. Starbirth also makes it really easy to get Rare Candy Charizard. You just Starbirth for Rare Candy Charizard, which gets you the three energy for free, even if you whiff that turn one energy attachment, because there's only 10 energy in the deck. Um, we see this build. This is probably going to be a common way to play it. It's going to be Charizard with extra fire Pokemon support. 
So, of course, we do see the double Entei V and the Delphox. Entei, of course, having that uh, burning Rondo attack, doing 20 damage for each of um, both players bench Pokemon. And then the Delphox is the big one. I think Delphox is a really good partner with Charizard. So, Delphox has the attack that allows you to put two Fire Energy on it into Lost Zone, but you can choose two of your opponents. Uh, you can choose... Uh, one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, sorry, and do 120 to it. So you can go 120 on the active and then 120 on the bench Pokemon. So you do a 120-120 snipe. If your opponent doesn't put a Manaphy down, you're going to be able to potentially take two prize cards, even sometimes more prizes, if you're finishing something off that you've set up. Delphox will be really good against single prize decks like Gardevoir, Lost Box, stuff like that. Even like other EX evolving decks like Charizard and even Tyranitar, where they have Larvitars and Charmeleons and Charmanders in play, you can knock out with Delphox. And Delphox can be built up any single turn. So ideally what this deck is, you can start Delphox, and if your opponent does not play a Manaphy down, you can go Rare Kenny Charizard, put three energy on it immediately, and then just attack right away. So that's really cool. That's one of the strong suits about Delphox, and once you've used Delphox Entei a bit, you can then go into your uh, Charizard here to start attacking in the later half of the game, which is what I like. So I, I do like this basic version of Charizard, uh, where you just have those extra fire attackers. There is Radiant Greninja. You've noticed Radiant Greninja is actually the main Radiant we've seen in both lists. No Charizard or Heatran yet, and maybe I haven't actually looked at these lists quite yet. I've taken a gander, but I haven't, like, haven't really digested them. So I'm actually curious to see if we're going to see any Radiant Charizard in these lists. Um, yep, I, that answers my question. The next list immediately has Radiant Charizard in it. Look at that. Um, so much like the other list, this one does focus a little bit more heavily on the Charizard EX. We do see four Charizard EX in the deck, not just the three like in that Entei Delphox deck. This one does play the Entei, no Delphox, but it's playing Bibberl and Mew, and it does have that one of Radiant Charizard. Radiant Charizard is a great partner for Charizard EX. I, I like Greninja because, I mean, the extra draw is good, right? It can help you find rare candies a bit easier, but it also does mean that you can't play Charizard, and Radiant Charizard is a great partner for Charizard EX because you can just put three Fire Energy for free. So, like, if your opponent knocks out a two-prize early on, Radiant Charizard becomes a threat right away, which is pretty good. That's why I like Radiant Charizard in... The Charizard EX deck. It's also just a really strong attacker. I mean, again, 250 slash 280 with a belt is really, really good. And the nice thing about the Radiant Charizard is you can go Entei, they knock out Entei, and then you go Charizard, Radiant Charizard, they knock out that, and they take three prizes, and then your Charizard EX is doing 90 more damage, right? And then his damage is, what, 270? So you're already going to be doing huge numbers. So that's why I like kind of the, the, the one-two punch of Entei Charizard and then Charizard Charizard as the, you know, kind of how you map your game plan out. Um, which is good. And that's what I do like. Then I would still maybe play Delphox, though, because Delphox is just a really good card. Um, like, I mean, Raikou kind of was, right? But I like the idea of Radiant Charizard. Um, in this list, we do see the Artisan Clap Stadium. I guess we should look at the stadiums real quick. The Arceus build played the Patent Lost City, which are both pretty good. And then this build here played Artisan. Great card to get Charmanders, obviously. And then this build also plays Artisan. We see another list here playing the Pidgeot in the deck. Um, and the Radiant Charizard, but this build does not play any Entei's or Delphoxes. In fact, the only two prizes it plays outside of the Pidgeot and the Charizard is the one of Squawkabilly, but Squawkabilly is good to, you know, set you up, right? And this deck is a little bit more go-all-in. It does play the four of Battle VIP, the Squawkabilly in the deck. Um, this one does also play Basin as a stadium. Basin is a card that you don't need to necessarily play in Charizard because Charizard EX is a dark Pokemon. You can base into Charmander or Charmeleon before you evolve into Charizard EX, but you can't use Basin on the EX or the Pidgeot. But you can play a Radiant Charizard, which is, I guess, the main idea is to use it with Charmander and Charizard. And just play Vitality Band, which I guess makes sense. Vitality Band does let Charizard EX also do 280 damage when they take it three prizes. But this is a bit more of a, um, a simple approach. Um, with the 1-1 Pidgeot for support, we're going to probably see a lot of Pidgeot. Again, that ability to get any card out of your deck for free is just mental. And it also makes it really easy to chain EXs, right? You just go every turn, quick search for Rare Candy or Charizard, and then put another Charizard in play and chain your attackers. We got another build here playing the Pidgeot engine. This one is a little spicy. We do see a couple um, one prizers. We see Manaphy, Mew, Pumpkaboo, Alexam Halucha and the new Cleffa. The new Cleffa has a free retreat, 30 HP, and it's got the attack that allows you to drop the seven cards in your hand when you do the attack, which isn't bad. Being able to drop it to seven is good. This build is kind of wonky, though. I just play a V-Guard energy, which honestly, I don't hate. You could actually put V-Guard energy on Charizard and then put two energy on it with its own ability and then give it a little bit more bulk. I actually don't hate that idea of a V-Guard energy in this deck. Um, I think this deck also can attack with Pidgeot, judging from the, um, judging from the, uh, the way this deck plays, I think Pidgeot's actually one of the main attackers in the deck. But it's more of a, an attacking Charizard deck with a lot of support around it. Right now, Alexam Halucha is actually really clever to play in this deck, too. I kind of like this more simplistic approach where Charizard is the main attacker, and you can even attack with Pidgeot 
in some scenarios. We got another build here, again, playing the Delphox, the Pidgeot, and the Radiant Charizard. Not playing the Entei, but optimizing the new Delphox alongside the Charizard. Also playing a Canceling Clone is really smart. So you can use Delphox, but if they have a Manaphy down, the Delphox is not as good. However, the deck does play Boss Cologne, so you can Boss Manaphy out, then Cologne it, and then do Delphox, and then knock out the Manaphy for 120, and then 120 snipes something else. So... That's not bad either, and it's honestly not hard to pull that off when you have access to Pidgeot. One of the cool things with this list is you can use Pidgeot to grab the Canton clone of the boss to then use the Delphox clone boss combo on a Manaphy. So there's really good synergy with the clone in this deck already, which I like. And the double Forest Seal Stone. There's a lot of search in this deck. Pidgeot and Forest Seal Stone gives you a lot to work with within this Charizard list. And then we got another list here. Again, this one does play Pokemon 151 cards. We do see the brand new Mew EX, which is not out yet. And obviously, we see the new Charizard from Pokemon 151. We don't have that yet. Um, we've already done a video where we looked at the new Charizard already, but obviously, we can play the Charizard with Charizard. I mean, Charizard's looking pretty insane because now we have two different Charizard EXs to choose from when the new Pokemon 151 set comes out. Um, but we're not there yet. And we do have another Arceus a uh, Charizard build. I like this build, <coughs> too. There's a lot going on. We see Arceus, Delphox, Pidgeot, Cleffa, and Radiant Zard, but more of a toolbox deck. I do like this build, too. I still would maybe want to see a Clanton clone in this build because you're able to use that Delphox snipe combo. So I, this build maybe should still play a clone, in my opinion, but I do like this build of uh, Arceus Charizard, too. And we got another Charizard here using the Bibberal Engine alongside Delphox, Entei, and Charizard. Again, another very simplistic, straightforward approach to the Charizard EX deck with your attackers. Again, this is a very, like, safe, simple way to play it. Um, very straightforward. We got another build here using Arceus. Very heavy kind of Arceus. Again, playing a 3-3 line. But again, Arceus isn't bad in this deck as you're able to attack with it early on. And you're able to build it up with the Charizard. Because I'm pretty sure Charizard works on non-fire Pokemon. It doesn't require only fire Pokemon, which is kind of insane. Um, and then again, we got another V-Box deck here playing the Radiant Greninja. Not the Radiant Charizard, though, but playing the Entei and the Delphox. Not playing any camps in Cologne. So I think we've only seen one Delphox list use Cologne. Because we got another list here with Entei and Pidgeot, but no Delphox or Arceus or any shenanigans. Actually, the crazy thing is this deck plays four Tower of Darkness, but I don't see any single strike Pokemon in the deck. That is, okay, I'm not, I, I don't know what's up with that. If anyone knows why there's four Tower of Darkness in the deck, but there's no single strike card in the deck at all. I'm pretty sure none of these cards are single, yeah, there's no single strike card in the deck. Why is there four Tower of Darkness? Sure, there's better stadiums to play than Tower of Darkness if there's no single strikes. Okay, that's, that's, that's questionable. <laughs> all right, we got another Charizard. This one does have the new, po uh, the Pokemon 151 Charizard, which is not out yet. Um, but you can use Charizard EX to build up the Pokemon 151 Charizard, which does have an attack that I think does like 250 damage or like 280 or something. It does a lot of damage, or even 300, or 330 actually. I forget how much damage this does. It, the new 151 Charizard does a ton of damage, but again, we're not there yet. We don't really care about that list because we're not, you know, the, the, the set comes, doesn't come out till what, September? Got more Charizard here with Squawk and the Radiant Zard. Again, more straightforward, does kind of lean into more attacking with the Charizard EX and the Radiant Zard. This one does play the new Victini. Um, I forget what the new Victini does, but I know it's not terrible. It does allow you, um, does do a decent bit of damage. I think its first attack actually does get energy into play too. It does play the Entei. So yeah, Victini EX could be another cool card to play with Charizard EX too. And obviously the Entei is good. This is a really cool build. We actually see Rayquaza VMAX with Charizard EX. Rayquaza VMAX does have the ability to discard your hand, draw three cards, and then it has that attack that obviously discards either fire or light energy and allows you to do big damage. So the idea of this deck is you use Charizard to build up Rayquaza and you actually use the fire energy side of Rayquaza's attack instead of discarding lightning because usually you get rid of light energy, right? Because you use Flaffy with Rayquaza. But this one uses Charizard EX to put energy on Rayquaza to then take a one-hit kill with Rayquaza and then you can attack with Charizard in late game. Really genius idea um, of playing Charizard. I really like that. I like it. It's spicy. I like spicy. Um, another very straightforward build, Radiant Zard and Squawkabilly, and three Basins. We got another build using the new Charizard, which we don't have yet. We see a Lost Zone build. <laughs> I mean, people will do what they do. I mean, Lost Zone Charizard EX doesn't even seem like a terrible deck, to be honest. I mean, Sableye does help a lot. I mean, this deck probably just destroys Gardevoir. I think this deck just poops on Gardevoir. This has to just beat Gardevoir, right? You Sableye and Charizard. Squawkabilly, though, is a little questionable. I'm not sure you need Squawkabilly in Lost Box, but I mean, hey. Lost Zone Charizard, it doesn't even seem terrible. It probably just destroys Gardevoir, because you have both Sableye and a Dark-type Charizard. Another Arczard, Very Arczard deck. 4-4 Arceus, in fact. 
And another build here, again, using the new Charizard. Another Entei Delphox combo. This one playing the new Victini. Um, just trying to skim through, because we've seen a lot of these lists. I think it's the last list to look at here until we are done with the new Obsidian Flames Charizard EX decks. Because the final build here does play a lot of different attackers. We got the new Victini EX. We got Entei. The new Entei does have the ability where if it's in the active spot, your opponent's active attacks do 20 less damage. And then Entei does... 50 plus 20 more damage treat fire energy attached to it. So you can use it as a big bulky attacker. It's actually probably really good against Lost Box because Sableye and Cramorant cannot one it KO the Entei, which is pretty good. So it's probably just very strong against Lost Box, which is, I guess, a good reason to play the new Entei, right? It's helpful against Lost Box. And then, of course, we've got that Radiant Charizard in the deck, too. More of a single prize is approach with the Entei Charizard split. But there you go. Those are all the new Charizard EX decks. We saw some pretty cool builds. The Rayquaza and the Lost Zone build specifically are a little bit more unique. But again, I think Charizard EX does open up a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of other fire Pokemon, or even Pokemon in general. You can play Charizard EX with not just what we saw here. And I'm excited to explore all kinds of different Charizard EX decks when the new Charizard EX comes out with the Pokemon 150, or the, the, Pokemon, the, the Obsidian Flame set. And then, of course, we got the second one with the Pokemon 151 set, too. Because they just make it even stronger. Because now you have two different Charizards to choose from. But hope you all enjoyed the video here. Looking at all the new Charizard EX decks. And a couple of new Tyranitar EX decks. I know we didn't see that many new Tyranitar decks. But, I mean, Charizard's kind of the main card. I think we can see some more lists here. Um, so if you want to see a more... Uh, Poke Obsidian Flames decks, let me know in the comments below, because there are more decks we can take a look at on this website, and then I'm down to look at before Obsidian Flames comes out, which is, I think it's next week, right? So, like, almost a week away from Obsidian Flames coming out on PCG Live. So, if you're excited, leave a like, and uh, make sure to sky down below, and check out all the socials down below and all the good stuff, and hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll leave a link to the website down below if you want to go check out these lists yourself, and maybe you want to build one IRL and practice a bit before Obsidian Flames drops. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.